One thing about Sparking Zero is just how long we have waited to prove we're better. We're better than you, you, him, her, all of y'all, all right? One thing we've waited on is the moment we could go online, get in the lobby, and wipe the floor with all the comp. Why? Because they're not comp at all. So here we are in ranked. We're going to break down my favorite units to use in ranked, but not just based on how powerful they are. This list is strictly for bang for buck value units. DP is clearly the value team you know mechanic where you got to make sure you have your balance right we can't have a bunch of vegetos and after images and super saiyan 4 gogetas running around so we got to make sure we have a little bit of uh let's go with budgeting all right so here are my top five budgeting units in the game however we do have two honorable mentions so let's get into it yeah, I heard around town is a popping now. All right, now as we get into the video and uh, display the honorable mention, my goat, my king, all right, he was the day one ruler, all right, Yajirobe. We have to understand what the rules are going to be for this video. What I did was I strictly looked for characters that were three or less DP. We're not doing four. I feel like four is when you start to realize characters that are supposed to be of like real good value, right? But we're all looking for those, you know, we want to run our Vegitos, our Gogetas, our Super Saiyan 2 Gohans. We got to find those characters that can work around our budget. So what I did was three or less is the rule based on, you know, all of their qualities, their traits, how useful they actually are in battle. Like, you know, we can run a Cyberman, but let's be just, we can run Hercule, but let's be for real, right? Unless you're cheesing, unless you're finding workarounds, most of the time, skilled players are supposed to beat you. So as we get into it, I just wanted to make sure everybody knows what's going on. Let's get started. Now, while I was being very serious about Yajirobe being one of the kings of the game day one, we also have another honorable mention being the blue... What is it? The Blue Hurricane. How, how could I forget? He's a goat. The Blue Hurricane and the Red Magma. We've got Birder here. Now, Birder is very straightforward. He's fast. I mean... That's exactly what he's supposed to bring to the table, right? It always will be. He is actually pretty hard to time a super counter on for me. I don't know if you guys are getting them off easier, but I found when I play birders, they're really, the timing is you got to adjust mid fight to the frame timing you need to get the attack off because you only have so many opportunities per second to pull a super counter. Birders attacks are really direct. You're either going to do his energy blast or you're going to do the rush attacks. The two, uh, one being a super and one being an ultimate, his rush attack, his space mac attack, mock, mac, mock, it's definitely mock, I mean, he's fast, his speed, um, <laughs> you're gonna do that attack and you're constantly gonna pressure the enemy, it's so easily, easily tied into his combos, so you're never gonna struggle to do anything of the sort when it comes to both of those rush attacks, as soon as you dash him down, the enemy feels pressure, right, so Birder, he charges key fairly quickly. I didn't feel like he was struggling at all to do it. But as you can see, I can just pressure you down. I can keep taking advantage of mistakes. I can tie them into my own combos and skill advances. You're not going to struggle with that at all. And it actually does a decent amount of damage. As you can see, I didn't just do one. I did two. All right, we got straight to it. As soon as we get Jace up in there, y'all already know what's activated, man. The purple comet crash. I found that Birder is just a very balanced speed unit. He's exactly what he's supposed to be. I wouldn't say he's the type of unit. He's not going to win you the fight. Most of these units, except for, you know, once we get higher up the list, you'll see exactly who those units are. You're not really supposed to win the fights, but I like him as my honorable mention. Now we get into number five, Cell Jr. Cell Jr. is actually a very, like... <laughs> Listen, he has hands for days. And one thing I like about him is because of his stature, you can actually weave and bob certain attacks you normally wouldn't. But at the same time, in all reality, the reach he has, he doesn't have the greatest ever. So you'll actually be on certain points of them of different maps. By the way, I'm not really allowed to say this, but I do not like the maps in this game. Like, I love the game. It's crazy. I love the game. I can't stand the maps. It's really bad. But uh, we need more. We need at least twice as many. And I think we could get like a good 40 maps out this game. I think it's not hard. Anyway, 
Cell Jr. has hands for days, but you have to be able to take advantage of it. Like people think they can just get rid of him, you know, wipe him off the mat with a couple supers. But because of his ease of use, you'll find yourself constantly just dashing through them, being aggressive, pursuing them, pressing your enemy, and they'll be caught off guard because it seems like he's somewhat hard to counter. I mean, I find myself just doing square, 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 and, you know, just doing that into his rush attack, and people cannot get the frame right for the super counter. So make sure you guys are taking advantage of Cell's aggression. Cell Jr., you know, little, little Jr. But make sure you got Bronny. He's actually like Bronny. Like, he's the son of the perfect... No, I'm just playing. <laughs> son of the perfect specimen is crazy. But, um, yeah, and his, his super attacks... I don't really love the special beam cannon. I never ever use it. I use his little skill techniques. I use the solar flare and I'll find myself, you know, here or there using the explosive wave to get out of situations. You can't really corner Cell Jr. That's what I really like about him. As you see right here, I did use his Kamehameha. I don't know if it's just me because I'm bad, but like Cell Jr.'s Kamehameha, it does not land, you know, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't track the way i want like it doesn't go straight down you know it's really weird it doesn't go it goes you know at a weird angle if i fling them up into the air too it's not a cutscene ability so you actually can find yourself like even if it hits they'll be able i can't explain it it won't connect and lock in the damage you want like sometimes i'll see damage that's like four thousand or six thousand and it's just weird. It feels like I should have gotten a clean hit off, but they had the frames necessary to either block or find their way out of it. Cell Jr. is a very, very powerful unit. All right, at my number four spot, we have the great Say a Wife? Say a Woman? Say a Man number two. We got Videl, all right, daughter of Hercule. We like her at this spot. Why? Because she is full of rush attacks she is a unit she just wants to be close to the enemy and if you're really nice with the hands you can love a character like that no matter what you always will be able to do Videl's supers because one she charges key fairly quickly like it's an average key charge and then two her super attacks are pretty cheap because they don't do a lot of damage in terms of you know against the field but they're constantly constantly pressuring the enemy as you can see you can just you do whatever you're doing, you handle your business, your little square, square, square combos, you run up on the enemy with that super attack. And she has what might literally be the fastest or at least one of the five fastest animations for the dashes I've seen, at least that I see consistently. She is damn near impossible to dodge, bro. Like I, I fight Videl's and I play Videl and I still can't figure out the timing on when to dodge these supers sometimes. The enemies, whatever player you're going against, will have no idea how to handle that. And as you can see, by the way, I didn't even mention it with Raccoon and uh, Birda, right? The insta sparking for Raccoon is another cheese tactic that they use to do that Ultra Bomber. Along with other characters, you guys, I'm sure by now know which are which. But yeah, she has an insta sparking, but more importantly, sounds crazy, right? More important than the insta sparking. She has an after image strike. Bro. It's been a couple weeks now. <laughs> I think we know, you know, just how cheese that after image strike really is against anybody, especially a character like Videl that wants to rush you down. Now, you still have to display that IQ, right? You can't just go around spamming it. You know, you're going to get key blasted. You're going to get grabbed. But Videl wants to be in close range. So as soon as you start taking advantage of any mistake that they make, once again, you're right back into the super attacks. You're right back into her ultimate attack. One thing about her, I might... I might not love this because it is a little frustrating, but it's just the reality is you can combo almost all of her rush attacks together because they send her flying, like her flying kick, her um, her super attack rush down. You can combo those into each other or you can combo those into her all. Like it's really, really, it's a hard time fighting Videl. As soon as you get caught, you got to make sure you get on her, bro. Like I'm not going to front, bro. It's, it's really difficult to escape a Videl combo. I mean, you guys are seeing it, right? You guys have seen it, whether you're playing the game or you're seeing it in videos. Videl really applies pressure. She is one of the best hand-to-hand -hand combat characters on the low end of the DP list. I really like it. All right, next up, we've uh, we've got the old hermit. All right, Master Roshi, a.k.a. Jackie Chun, a.k.a. the World Martial Artist Champion, a.k.a. the creator of the Turtle Destruction Wave. Now, Roshi here, there's multiple reasons we gotta talk about Roshi. Really, all of these characters here have a really high value, obviously the point of this video. 
but Roshi specifically, let's just go down the whole move. If you're struggling, you need a beam clash, or you need to, you know, knock a couple health points off of one of those... Sorry, I almost let one slip there. Off of one of those lame giants, all right? One of those sleazy giants. You got your Kamehameha, all right? Classic. It is an instant super. That's the thing I like about it is it's way easier to pull his off than, say, Goku's or, you know, like, Perfect Form Cell or... Just a lot of these characters with the instant super attack beam impacts, you're going to need those all the time because you never know when somebody's going to try you from a distance, right? I mean, bro, there were only a few moves in the game as easy to pull off and as hard to escape as the Thunder Shock Surprise. I mean, jeez, bro, the Lightning Stun Wave is easily up there as like one of the most free moves in the game. I mean, if you do it and they're in your direction, it's really supposed to hit them. Like, yeah. You can dodge it. You can technically get away from it if you're far enough away to where you're not right in front of the wave. You can it bends a little bit, but it's not like the craziest curve. Dog, in reality, if you're a good play, if you're an average, if you're trash, if you're trash, you're supposed to be able to pull this move off at will just because it's so simple. And not only is it so simple, the reason it's so free and feels so cheesy is because they're stuck. They're stuck for at least two full seconds. Like you can't get up from that move just because you do the recovery buttons. Like, it's really difficult. Bro, you can just charge up again. You can, <laughs> like, you can just keep charging up and keep doing the move now. It's not like rinse and repeat for real unless the person actually doesn't know how to stand up. But you can get two or three key bars of key right back. Or if you know they fall back after you do that attack, you get right into your sparking mode. And next thing you know, what do you have, bro? <laughs> the Mafuba. It's ridiculous, dog. It's ridiculous. That is... I don't really mind that it's as powerful as it is, especially because one thing you guys all have realized by now, the Mafuba takes my HP, too. Now, as you see right here, Turles was just out of reach. Like, it's crazy. I feel like I was... He was probably like... He reaches his hand out. I would have snatched him up, put him in that little vase, man. Y'all know what it is. But no, in that little grinder, you know. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But in all seriousness, Roshi is, along with having, you know, false courage and his after image strike himself, just like Videl, of course, bro, he can transform. Roshi can change his playstyle completely and become a rushdown, hard hitting, up close melee type unit. Not that he lacks the ability to, you know, engage in fisticuffs up close. As you can see, I gave Vegeta a little bit of hands. Full power Roshi is. You find somebody that's cheesing giants, you transform into full power Roshi, you wouldn't have access to, you know, the cheese I was just referring to a moment ago, but he can not, I've handled giants as max power Roshi, especially once you enter in sparking mode, you got your max power Kamehameha, the original Kamehameha, he gets in that mode, bro, it's really stunning to know that they made Roshi so variable, so flexible, he is, that's, I think that's the perfect term, he is a flex option to the umph degree. I'm really impressed with Roshi. I appreciate him. I run him the most out of any of these characters, except, except number one, all right? But Roshi is up there. Roshi is up there. That is my number two spot, Dos Silver Metal, my king, the OG. Now, before we get to number one, I just want to take a moment to say, nah, I'm just playing. It's Raditz. That's my dog, man. We got Goku's older brother here, man. Big bro be handling business, all right? I found myself in situations where I am wiping people with Raditz because they have no idea how good he is. He seems to be one of the most overlooked. Yeah, he's got to be the most overlooked out of all of these options, right? Like, people, you know, cheese the Android 19 and 20, like Jero and them. They can, you know, cheese first form cell, life drain you, and they can find little workarounds with characters that are four and five DP just to get by. Bro, Raditz is really with all the business. Raditz does have an insta sparking. He has Saiyan Spirit. I don't really like Saiyan Spirit. I feel like it's a waste of points. Like you, you use it and you use your blast stocks up and then you'll be in a situation where you wish you had him back. I don't like that ability. But Raditz, dog. Raditz it does real damage. Raditz has real combos. He has real speed. I rush people down with Raditz. Now he's not overly let's go with overly powerful in one area. He doesn't just drag the line in one of these stat areas, right? Like he's not super powerful for key blasts or for strike attacks. He is perfectly above average in everything. I've 
bro, I'm mopping people with Raditz. His ult, now, the thing about his ult, it's almost like it got patched. Like, I don't know if it's just been made work, bro. I, there are combos. I'm being completely honest. I have him one, but I'm not going to just blindly lead y'all into him being one, right? And tell y'all go out there and do whatever. No, I'm going to tell you the flaws of one, too. Raditz will find himself in situations where I'll do the full combo for the sparking mode and I'll just, you know, blow the enemy away. A straightforward upward punch, right? That upward kick, I should say. And use his ult and it won't connect or it'll touch them and they're able to block it or it'll touch them and it just will blind them as if they didn't. Like the cutscene won't trigger, basically. It's really weird. It's almost like a halfway connection or it'll do a, a half of the damage it's supposed well, less than half for sure. And of the damage it's supposed to do, but I found when it does connect, and I don't really know, see that issue every game or anything like that, but when I have that issue, I get right back to the hands. When I don't have that issue, his ult does really good damage, and it's as soon as it touches you, you know, the trigger is going to happen. The cutscene's going to happen. It's good for blast impacts. I'm really good at blast impacts. Maybe that's why I like Raditz so much. When I throw that ult at people who are really trying to play me, I win, like I, straight up, like I win, I, I knock two of their HP bars off and we call it a night. I'm really enjoying this game so far. It has its issues, it has its flaws and sins, just like the rest of us, right? But we're working on it and I just wanted to make sure y'all know that at the moment of this recording, these are the one, two, three, four, five, and then technically six and seven <laughs> best bang for your buck type DP options in ranked for sparking zero. Hey, man, y'all already know what's up, man. Y'all got to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. I appreciate you guys this time so much. Y'all know what's popping, man. Y'all get online. Y'all start handling business. I need to chill off online. All right. Not. I love the game. I've played hundreds of matches already, dog. My win rate is way, it's at least 10 or 12% lower than it's supposed to be because whenever I win, one out of every six of my wins is just mar, it's scratched by the fact that people rage quit with no consequence. We got to do something about it. We got to do something about it. But until they do that, I ain't going to front. I am going to keep playing this game like obsessively because I got issues and I'm a Dragon Ball fan. So we're going to keep trying and trying again. It is the Young King Hitman. Y'all know what's popping, man. Young Hitman is off this.